Sir, sir. Yes. Eh, what's this, sir? <laughs> well, that's a cat. A cat? But, but sir, they, they are walking weapons of chaotic power waiting to destroy you, sir. <laughs> <laughs> you only say that because you're a dog. <laughs> See, sir, even he agrees with that. No, 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 that's not what he said. I've been with you for half a year. I'm beginning to understand goatish or goatees or gotahi or whatever the bloody hell he speaks. Uh, it, it, it's bleating, sir. <laughs> bleating. Yes, of course. I knew that. Can't you see that I'm busy? Go bother somebody else, you little buggers. Go, go play with Mr. Thorstein. Not me. Oh, no, no, no. My head hurts today. Oh, all right. Spring is coming to an end. Summer is almost upon us. Go play outside, it's a beautiful day. Ah, scatter along, you little scallywags. <coughs> so, Mr. Thorstein, why does your head hurt? Too much meat last night, old friend, hmm? No, 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 it's not that. First, it was spring with allergies, and now uh, summer is coming, and sometimes it's cold, sometimes it's raining, sometimes it's very hot. I don't know what in the devil am I supposed to wear. Oh, yes, it's a strange weather. You know our ancestors used to celebrate this particular time by sacrificing chickens and summoning demons? Oh, what? Oh yes, I was reading that in this book with blank pages, so I just made this up. <laughs> Thank the gods. But, you know, we are in the 21st century and there are still people who think that paganism is about sacrificing animals and worshipping the devil. So, I think we should clear that up, wouldn't you agree? Well, if you really must! All right, let's do this. Hello, friends, how are you? My name is Ari Thurger, and today I'm going to talk about Bielten and Frigablot. So let's start first with Bielten. This celebration, called Bielten or Bieltenia, is an Irish Gaelic celebration held during the month of May. And it derives from the old Irish words for bright fire or bell fire. So this reminds us of the bonfires which were lit in honor to the god Bel, or as the Mediterraneans call him, Belenus. There are some associations with this god that link to the god Cernunus, but Bel is the god of light and fire. During this particular time of the year, the agriculture calendars used to have no activity whatsoever. So this was a time dominated by the fruitfulness of the trees, which were revered by parties of communion with nature. And there was a certain significance with love and freedom. Beltania is the polar festival of Samhain, a very special day of the year when time and space vanish and new rules of inversion and regression are open for the evolution of the human soul. So this means that the, both the living and the dead can contact again, but this time under the rules of unconditional love. This is also a festival that celebrates the reaping of the sun god. Well, as I have said, this is the time to be connected and in line with the spiritual world. And just like in Samhain, this is the night when the veil between worlds is thinner and a gap opens, allowing the living to contact with the dead and have an experience like no other. Now, putting aside this more spiritual aspect of the celebration, Beltane officially heralded the beginning of summer and, as the name suggests, fire, bright fire, bell fire, it is, uh, it is a celebration associated with fire, so bonfires played an important part uh, in the activities of this day and were often lit in prominent landmarks. Of course, there are certain traditions connected with this celebration, for instance, people used to drive a herd of cows between two bonfires in the belief that this would purify the herds and also bring good luck and fortune. People would also gather mayflowers, flowers that would blossom during this month, such as primrose, gurus and hawthorn, and also sprigs of rowan. They would gather all of these uh, before dawn and would place them in the doors of their houses to ward off evil spirits. So, as you may have noticed, there are certain similarities with the celebration of Walpurgis Night, 
which was the, the celebration I have made a video of uh, in the previous video that you might see. And of course there are certain similarities because this is a, the exact same celebration but in different European cultures. But they are all connected with fire, the end of spring and the coming of summer. As you may have also noticed, um, people in pagan times, in pagan Europe, people would celebrate the coming of summer a month before the official com coming of, of summer. And well, our ancestors weren't stupid. They knew the gods they had, they knew the needs they had during summer. So they would make all the preparations way before the coming of summer. They will make all these rituals, all the off offerings, all the celebrations before the official coming of summer. Well, take this example for instance. It might be weird and nothing to do with this celebration, but when people expect a baby, they, they don't buy whatever the baby needs when the baby comes out in the day the baby is born. No they make all the preparations months before the baby is born they know the baby is coming so they buy all everything the, the baby needs to survive to be happy and to be nourished even when the baby is in the woman's womb the baby is being nourished by the mother so this is the exact same thing people would make all the celebrations and the offerings to the spirits to the land and to the gods so they could have a good summer, way before the summer would officially begin. Now let's go to the celebration of Frigablot. Of course our Norse ancestors would have a celebration during this time to honor the end of spring and the coming of summer. And I have already talked about that in the previous videos of Walpurgis Night and Sigrablot. But to the neo-pagans who practice the Norse pagan traditions, they have placed this celebration in the 20th of May. So as the name suggests, Frigablot, this is a celebration to honor the goddess Friga. And to better understand this celebration, we must be familiarized with the goddess and in what ways she works. So who is this goddess Friga? Friga, or Frigg, is the wife of the god Odin and she is also the queen of Hosgard and the mother of the god Baldr, who is the god associated with innocence and light. She is also the goddess of fertility, but her powers go beyond that, because she is also the, go the goddess of motherhood and protection, the goddess of love and of home and domestic affairs, and she is the goddess connected with his of transition, which means having a peaceful death, and, of course, she is the goddess of family. In mythology, it is said that she can predict the future, and from where she stands, she knows what goes on in the entire universe. But she is often called the silent goddess, because she never speaks about what she knows, possibly because she keeps all that knowledge, and it, she doesn't share with everyone. She keeps that knowledge to, to counsel gods in individually. She's also connected with weaving. In mythology she uses her spinning wheel to weave the clouds. So this shows her connection with weather and the coming of seasons and the constant changes of earth and nature um, in order to have balance and prosperity. So in this particular celebration, Frigablot, people honor this goddess in order to receive the powers of protection, or powers of protection in home. Because each house, each home is the defensive castle of each family. It's the place where we find peace and joy with our families, our folk and our ancestors. She is also the protector of children. And nowadays we live in societies with certain political orders that probably unconsciously, they are destroying our families and our homes, they are destroying the positive energies and harmony and balance we should have, we should feel at home. You have to take in mind that we spend most of our time out there working and we only have a little time 
at the, at the dinner table, to be together, to be with a family. And this is extremely destructive for our children because they are turning away, they, they don't have this connection with family values and they are turning away from peace, harmony, happiness and protection and nowadays we really need this goddess for our children because our children need to feel protected, they need to feel loved and if we are not with them, if there is this breaking of balance and harmony in, in our homes, in our family. This really is complicated to our children. It's like an eternal fight between the forces of chaos and the forces of order and balance. If there isn't balance at home, we will never find peace in it. And if we don't, uh, there is no other place out there that we can find peace unless we have peace within ourselves. Of course, there are places out there which are beautiful and you might find peace, you might find peace with other people. But we, if you don't have peace within yourself first, it will be very complicated. And family and home can help in that, in creating harmony and balance and happiness so you can face the world out there, that jungle out there full of obstacles and problems, uh, so you can face it better. Of course, there are terrible families out there, but this is a, the, that's exactly the point. Families have to, have to learn how to create balance, har harmony and peace within the home and within family members. So we can have um, this harmony within ourselves, this peace. Uh, if we go outside with so much problems in our heads, with so much stress and turmoil created by our family, create within the place that we should call home and we should feel protected and loved, that will be very complicated to deal with the world out there. So, people pray to this goddess to create harmony and peace within our homes so we can better face our problems out there. We should make our homes our hideout, our place of comfort, the place where we, where we rest, where we find peace. And as I've said, this helps us a lot to face all the problems, all the obstacles that are out there. So that's it friends, I hope you have enjoyed this video. All the links to my social media are down below at the description. Thank you so much for watching, see you on the next video and of course, talk for it all.